Good morning and welcome to Blackstone Valley United Methodist Church on this, the second Sunday after Christmas. So we are still in the Christmas season. I know that Donna Bishop wanted to say a few words. Good morning, Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you all um, in person and to those who are at home in person for your generosity for the children who received the gifts that we put under our tree. Um, as usual, everyone is overwhelmingly generous and Bonnie Mochum put some of her yummy Christmas cookies in the package. So. And, and just, I don't know, if, if you could just see the smiles on their faces and how grateful, especially in this time of need, these folks are, because you know what? It may allow them to pay a bill just because we buy some gifts. So I just wanted to thank you all very much from the bottom of my heart, and I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. Thank you. Thank you. And a reminder that this Tuesday is church council and we will be meeting on Zoom. So if you want to join the meeting, be in touch with Tom Dill and he will get you the link for that. So now let us join into our time of worship with our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Like sages from afar, come and behold your Christ. Let us fall on our knees in his honor. Let us lift our voices in praise of his name. Good morning. Stand if you wish, and let's sing together our opening hymn, Christ is the World's Light. You'll find the music on page 188 in the red hymnal, and of course the words will be up on the screen for you. This is our last cookie children's sermon, although a couple people have said maybe we should find a way to continue it all year. <laughs> and those weren't kids who said that. So have you ever needed 
a light to see in the dark. And when you need a light, you might flip a switch on the wall, right? Or simply ask Siri to turn on flashlight. Before there was electricity and light bulbs or flashlights, people would light a candle to give them light. And a few weeks ago, we all lit candles, right, and sang Silent Night. And a few weeks ago, we heard for a couple of weeks about a man named John. And what did John the Baptist do? He baptized Jesus, that's right. That's how he got the Baptist part of his name. Today's scripture is again about John the Baptist, but it's also about light. The Gospel of John chapter 1 tells us that God's word, the light of the world, was coming in person. And that light is Jesus. So God sent John the Baptist to tell people about Jesus and to prepare them to believe the good news. Some people didn't believe. How could the word of God come in person, they wondered. That's impossible, they said. And when Jesus did come as a baby, some people still didn't recognize anything special about him. They just thought he was an ordinary baby. They didn't see him as extraordinary. But some people did believe the good news. They believed that God's word has indeed come into the world in a new and amazing way. And it's an amazing story. It's so amazing that sometimes you can see why some people don't believe. And I hope that you believe it. Our last cookie is an example of the light of Jesus. When people don't see the truth, sometimes we say that they're left out in the dark. You ever heard that phrase? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the light. Because we know Jesus, we see that light. A burning candle reminds us that we have seen the light of the world, Jesus. So as you enjoy your cookie, I invite you to wonder together with your family on how you can trust God when you feel like you're in the dark. And for our closing prayer this morning, I'm gonna have Donna lead us in singing a song that we probably all know, just the first verse, it's This Little Light of Mine. And um, you can all do your light while you sing, because the song doesn't work unless you do the light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of And all God's children who have seen the light say, Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John. The first hymn just about covered it, but I'll repeat it if you missed it. <clears throat> if you could tie the sermon into this, that would be something. <clears throat> John 1, verses 1 through 18, from the Common English Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. 
but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become children of God, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law has given through Moses, so grace and truth come into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. So, Glenn, one of the first churches I served after a couple of weeks, someone came up to me after worship and said, do you realize that, that like your call to worship and your prayer and all the hymns all match with the scripture and the sermon? I was like, yeah, they're supposed to. <laughs> but apparently they, that doesn't always happen, so it surprises people when it does. Let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us here today so that we can see your light and help us to be your light. May my words and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I had this parishioner in Vermont, and I didn't know exactly where he lived, but one Christmas he told me that he had put a large lighted star on the corner of his condominium. The next Christmas, he told me that he'd been giving it some thought over the year, and instead of putting the star back up, he put a lighted cross up. A couple of his neighbors asked why a cross at Christmas, and that's about all of the conversation there seemed to be around it. And after Christmas, he decided he was going to leave it up. One night, I was cutting over the road. The hospital is on as I headed down the hill toward Montpelier. There was the lighted cross. I remember thinking how many people travel that route and pass it each night. A few months into the pandemic, I got an email from that former parishioner asking how I was doing. I responded that you know I was managing just like everyone else, and then he emailed back and he said, you remember the cross I have on the corner of the house? I had a doctor's appointment the other day, and when the nurse was updating my record, she looked at my address and said, is that the house with the cross? I said yes, and she said that when she leaves work in the evening, the sight of the cross reminds her of her faith and gives her hope even on her toughest days. She said that some of her co-workers have also noticed it as well and that they find comfort in seeing it, especially in those early days of the pandemic when it felt like we were all standing on shifting sand. And last time we were in Vermont, we drove down the hill and there was the cross. And I found myself thinking of all the people who've driven by and what they might have thought when they saw that cross. And I thought of that cross, of that simple act of witnessing to the light when I read this morning's scripture, the prologue or opening of John's gospel. These opening words of John's gospel have all the gravitas of the opening words of Genesis. As a matter of fact, both Genesis and John start with in the beginning. Both are stories of creation. John places Jesus within the creation story, there from the very beginning. Unlike the other Gospels, John doesn't tell us about angels or virgins. You see, he's less concerned with how Jesus came to live among us than with who he is and why he came to live among us. 
Within those first few verses, we hear that Christ is the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. And we're introduced to John the Baptist, who is not the light, but came to testify to the light. And isn't that exactly what my former parishioner is doing with his lighted cross, testifying to the light? He's not the Messiah, but he knows who is and he helps others know. Now, certainly you've heard the Motel 6 slogan, we'll leave the light on for you. Well, that slogan first aired more than 30 years ago, making it the longest running campaign in radio history. Behind that folksy voice is an enduring strategy. You're not cheap to stay at Motel 6, you're smart. You don't need all that fancy stuff that other hotels charge extra for. Families on a budget, retirees, and road warriors are always welcome at Motel 6. The light's always on. Just like your parents left a light on for you when you'd be coming home in the dark. We leave a light on here at Blackstone Valley United Methodist Church every single night. It's the light that shines through our front stained glass window the window that depicts Christ praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I wonder how many people pass by the light and sense that we've left it on just for them. You see, it's kind of our way of saying that you are always welcome here. We've left the light on for you. Over Christmas, we all send and receive cards, right? And many of them have those family photos and the letters telling about the year's adventures. And all of these year in review photo cards and letters got me wondering what it would look like if we did a church photo card and letter. What images would we include and what stories would we recount? How about a photo of the light shining through the stained glass at night with the darkness not overcoming it? a visual reminder of the light we testify to. And perhaps this morning's gospel reading helps us decide what we'd include in the letter. In Eugene Peterson's The Message, he paraphrases verse 14, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Don't you love that? Moved into the neighborhood? It's probably the best definition of an incarnation that there is. Incarnation is simply the word we use to capture that God came to us in human form, that he moved into the neighborhood. Peterson's phrasing reminds us that God didn't just take a human body. God took on a human life, living just as we do, right in our neighborhood. As we look back on the past year and ahead to the new year that's just begun, how have we helped the word come to life in our neighborhood? Who have we left the light on for? Because that's what being and doing church is all about. German mystic Meister Eckhart asked, what good is it to me if Mary gave birth to Christ 20 centuries ago and I don't give birth to Christ in my person and my culture and my times. The very heart of being a Christian is being a witness of birthing Christ again and again so that others will know his love and grace. Christmas is about transformation. And it's about our part in helping God to make the world new. In their book, The First Christmas, Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan put it this way. The Christmas stories are not about a spectacular series of miraculous events that happened in the past that we are to believe in for the sake of going to heaven. Rather, the Christmas stories are about God's passion, God's dream for a transformed earth, and although 2,000 years have passed since this wondrous event we celebrate as Christmas, without the long hoped for transformation taking place, 
we can be assured that the birth stories are not a pipe dream, but rather a proclamation that what we have seen revealed in Jesus is the way, the way to a different kind of life and future. So the 12 days of Christmas are drawing to a close. Some people have already started putting their lights away and others will do so this week. So how can you keep Christmas in your heart and witness to the light now that the season is ending? Well, maybe you'll leave just one candle in a window. After all, light helps us to see where we are going. Light helps us to see the true nature of things. Light is a symbol of hope, not just for us, but for someone passing by who doesn't even know that we left it on for them. Amen. Please stand if you wish, and let's sing together, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. It's in the Red Hymnal on page 206. be seated as we turn our hearts to prayer. God of grace and love, may your light shine through us that we might be signs of your presence to all we meet. Let your light shine in places where the darkness of illness, death, grief, fires, storms, oppression, or poverty make everything seem impossible. Help us to be about your work of rebuilding. Gracious God, as we begin a new year, remind us of the things that are important and worthwhile. Help us to live in the goodness that comes from doing what you want us to do. 
Help us to put aside anxiety about the future and about the past so that we might live in peace with you now, one day at a time. Amen. As we begin a new year in the shelter of God's grace and love and prepare to receive communion, let us be truthful about our lives, about our living, and about our limits. Let us offer to God and each other that truth as we pray, first in silence and then together. And let us pray together. Holy God, author of life and source of all hope, creator, redeemer, sanctifier, hear our prayer. We know that the blank slate of a new year seems so promising. We haven't done anything too awful, not yet. And we know that the blank slate of a new year is also an illusion. Time continues and our lives flow from one day to the next, from one year to the next. In this time, we know we are sometimes remarkable and generous, bearing light to the shadows. And we know that we are sometimes full of despair and selfishness, hoarding light and goodness for ourselves. We invite you on our journeys, O oh God. We invite you to seek your presence with us in the darkness and the light, in our remarkable moments and our awful ones. We seek your presence. We bask in your love through Christ. Amen. Each week, we gather to praise God and grow more generous in spirit and in action. We take an offering each Sunday so that we can practice that all-important generosity of spirit. Our offering supports this church, our ministries, and the work of the global United Methodist Church. Thank you for your generosity. pray together. God of this day and all days, we can only imagine the darkness of the world into which you sent your Son, a world that believed that salvation rested on our ability to follow the rules. Jesus came to bring light into that darkness and into our darkness. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, transform them into light for the hungry, for the hopeless, for the forgotten, and the oppressed. We share this light in us. In Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We have an interactive 
communion liturgy today, so you'll want to pay attention to the screen. Here at this table and in this sanctuary, let the divine spark enter our lives. Let the holy light aid us in seeing the Christ in our midst. The brightness of Jesus the Christ will illuminate our way. The radiance of the Christ will warm our hearts. God is shining upon you. And God's light streams upon you. Open your hearts. We open them to the brilliance of God. Let us give thanks for the light and love of God. We praise our Creator with joy and thanksgiving. We enter this stunning space eager to experience the presence of the Christ. Notice the Christ in the cries of the children. Spot the Christ in your neighbor's singing. Recognize the Christ in the laughter from the back of the sanctuary. The Christ is gleaming here, summoning us to share love and light as we greet our neighbor, share peace, pass the bread and cup, and love kindness across this earth. On the night before Jesus died, when some were plotting to extinguish the holy light, warmth was shared between friends. Jesus took bread. In his blessing, he passed the divine glow on to his followers. And as he broke the bread, he reminded them that to eat in remembrance of him. Later that evening, Jesus took the cup he blessed it, and he invited his friends to taste from the cup of grace. Do this as often as you drink of this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, may your divine glow bless this bread and cup. Warm our hearts made cold by a chilled world. May this meal inspire us to carry your warmth into our world. Amen. And now let us pray together with the confidence of children of God, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So our bread and cup are in little individual servings today in light of the more contagious variant of COVID. So I invite you to come, um, spacing yourselves appropriately to receive God's gifts.
Will you join me in the prayer after communion? God of light and love, we cherish this table in this season when the nights are long and cold. Through this meal, the Christ and our neighbors, our hearts have warmed. May the comfort in our souls sustain us through winter and nudge us to create welcoming spaces for our neighbors. With gratitude, we leave here energized to kindle your love in this world. Amen. Please stand if you would like, and let's sing together our closing hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. So go and let your light shine so that others may know the one true light. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.